let's say we've gotten a plan together. We want to launch maybe a small course. What is a good step in actually charting out what type of content we want, right? We've gotten a bead from our audience. We kind of know what the pain points are. How can we actually start with the planning of our course? Right. Great question. So I would look at specifically what those pain points are. And if you can pick three to five that are connected to each other, um, I would literally jot down three to five solutions for each of those three to five mm. pain points. And those become your modules or your components or your chapters or whatever it is. And then within each of those, write down exactly how you're going to solve them. So in my case, I did a course on everyday culinary nutrition. And the challenge was how do we get people into the kitchen, cooking healthy meals for their family and get over the idea that it's hard, it's complicated, it's expensive. I don't have time. No one's going to eat it. I waste so much food when I go shopping. Um, and so those were the points I had to cover. And so straight away, I talk about, you know, here's how you make your grocery shopping list super efficient. Here's how you plan so you don't throw out food at the end of the week. Here are three simple things that each take under 10 minutes to make that can form staples. Here are three breakfasts. Here are three lunches. Here here are three dinners, here are three snacks, and each one has an infinite number of substitution options. So in this course, I have crossed out every pain point. I've checked them off. I've answered those questions. So for someone who wants this, they're going to look at it and be like, I have no more excuses. And I priced it well. Yeah. And things so, change over time, right? So as things change, how easy is it for you, Megan, to go in and make adjustments and add new pain points? Do you have to create new courses or you just go in and, and adapt to your audience? So far, I've been really fortunate. Um, in my main signature program or flagship program, the Culinary Nutrition Expert Program, uh, we refilmed it once since we've been offering it. Um, and I've since had to modify a couple of the videos, adding in a few more course videos, but a really well thought out course solves a very specific issue mm. that I don't want to say the problem has longevity, but it's not going away anytime soon. <laughs> no. um, so, you know, until the, in my case, everyone can afford a private chef. What I offer is never going away. Right. Um, and, and you want to create that value rich thing because you don't want to have to keep going back in and tweaking and adjusting because then the consistency changes, the quality shifts. Even if you're having it all professionally produced, you set up the lighting one day, the next day, it's going to be different if you have a different crew or, or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Um, so one of the most valuable things, the most expensive thing you can do is create the course. That's where most of your investment will go. What you want to be able to do is create something that has so much depth and value and is so well thought out and so beautifully presented that you can sell that course year after year after year after year because that's where you start actually earning that incredibly um, liberating extra revenue, whether, you know, you're doing this as a side hustle, as you're talking about people, you know, working on this after hours, eventually it can become a full-time thing. Um, but that might not happen the first time you sell it or the second time you sell it. The, the profit starts coming in after you've covered all your expenses for yourself and your time and production costs and all that stuff. So you want to create something that you can launch over and over and over again. Well, this could be a challenge too, and, and probably something that all course creators should be considering when developing their course modules and, and the, the actual theme of their course, because the world is changing so, so quickly. If your course is built on how to build your Instagram following in 2020, you, you miss out on that longevity, right? You can't keep relaunching that because it's that's a very, as you've mentioned, time consuming and expensive thing to do. You know, it's interesting because you mentioned social media. So I started in 2008. Um, first of all, never put a year in anything you do <laughs> ever. Like it's, we've used stuff like course catalogs and we put the year into the URL and then we're like constantly having to just update that URL <laughs> instead of the files. So never put a year on anything, um, especially if it's 2020, because maybe no one wants to remember this <laughs> one again. But anyway, but um, something to keep in mind is, and I just completely lost what I was going to say about about creating things. You're, you're busy worrying seven. about what's going to happen next in 2020 because we're only three or four oh. of the way through. We still got another, not a quarter, right. quarter. It was about social media and something to pay anyone creating course in uh, social media courses. The best practices for social media don't actually ever change. They never do. There's like hmm. technical things that change. The platforms will change, but being engaged, being authentic, keeping it conducive to whatever it is you're trying to sell or promote or share, none of that has ever changed. The value of consistency, uh, reliability, building that community there, engaging with that community, 
doesn't change. You know, I've tried, you know, I was on Vine and Periscope and all these things that don't exist. And, you know, you mentioned YouTube. I don't think I've uploaded anything to YouTube in a long time just because a, a factor of time. But, um, you know, the same rules apply. And yeah, if you the, create the, something really good about social media, it will remain valuable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's 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 basically every social media platform is the same as far as the core principles, engagement, watch time, replies, likes, etc. cetera. Uh, but but there's small tweaks, like the number of hashtags that you use might be adjusted over time. And that, that could also depend on uh, your your platform, the time of day. There's 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 a lot of factors. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's that's some actually some really, really important advice. Try to keep your course contextual on a long-term basis, maybe have some small add-ons that you can adjust. That's one of the nice things about blogging, right? You can go back and you can adjust your blog and keep it up to date on an annual or semi-annual basis. That's, that's an interesting uh, thing to talk about. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed this episode. I've got several other episodes right here for you. Smash one of these videos to make sure that you don't miss out on the tips, tools, and tactics of industry experts. Let's take that side hustle full time. Smash one of these links.